oh no, the lights have gone out and it's starting to get really, really spooky around here. But that's okay because today's tutorial glows in the dark. I bet you're ready to get started. I am so glad the power's back on because I think you'll be better off seeing all of this in the light, but I hope that didn't scare you too much. Now, thread painting is super fun. It's free motion machine quilting that doesn't matter how well you stitch or not because we're just gonna move all over. So what you're looking at right here, right now, is the finished project, the finished product, and I've done these on a very large piece of fabric. So this is the final thread painting, the filled in version. I wanna talk you through starting on basically our outline version here. And you're also noticing I have a couple of different fabrics. So let's go back a whole step, right? And I wanna talk about, we have the, um, Prisma dyes or the Kona cottons we're using. It's a solid black, real nice, real dense, real deep. And I've also been playing a lot with this Crossroads denim. The Crossroads denim is a lot of fun because if you can see, possibly, I know black is tough at home, sorry for the camera, but it's gonna help with our glow in the dark, right? It has kind of two different surfaces. One that's almost like a, a washed jean look and then the other side that's nice and dark. And there's a lot of great body to both of these fabrics. When you're thread painting, you want fabric that really has some density to it. You don't wanna use something that's really loose because we want something that's gonna help hold all of those stitches together. But before we can even start stitching, we need to transfer the design over. So let me show you that real quick. So to get our transfer ready, thanks again, art department over at Man Sewing, a fantastic sugar skull drawing. I just love this. Now, you can find these printables in the description below the video or on the mansewing.com uh, page under free stuff. We've got bunches of them out there for all of our different tutorials, right? Now, that one I printed on cardstock, so it'd be nice and stable. I would like you to print yours out on regular printer paper and we're going to basically destroy this pretty quick. The other thing you're gonna probably wanna use is some of the standardized wax tracing paper. Make sure if you can, you can get eight and a half by 11 sheets because your printer pages are gonna be eight and a half by 11. And when you take that, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and lay that so that the waxy paper is down. And I just check by making a little finger mark and then I'm gonna peel that back and I can see that it's actually made a mark on my fabric. So I know that I am tracing this from the correct orientation. Then I lay my design and you notice I've got extra fabric around where I'm working because I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do with these. You can apply these to all kinds of things like the back of a jacket would be super cool. Maybe a pillowcase would be super cool. I've got a couple other tricks at the end make you stick around for those, right? Now the major important thing is I've got all of these little lines I want to trace around. So I've learned that if I use a pen or pencil that is opposite color, I can really see where I'm working. So I'm going to start right in the middle. Once I start tracing this, I really don't want it to move at all. So I'm just gonna go around the nose. And the red pen now shows me where I've been working. I'm gonna go ahead and detail out some of the other portions of this. So I'm just gonna go around tracing on top of everything, trying not to move. Now, the wax paper, when we're all done stitching through it, will wipe right off with like a baby wipe. I use unscented baby wipes or unbleached baby wipes because of the black fabric, of course. Um, a sponge and water will work. And actually, if you don't work quick enough, sometimes you'll actually take some of the marks off just through the process. So I'm gonna go around here, and you probably are more excited to see the thread painting than the actual tracing here. So I'm just gonna show you how this worked for those lines. Once I've got them, are you ready? So you can see how beautifully that transfers and how nice that is. And once you have all of your lines done and all of your lines transferred over onto your background fabric, and of course this was on the right side of the fabric, we're going to get ready to do the free motion thread painting. Just a quick reminder, we are in free motion mode, so our feed dogs are down. I've got one of the cool hopping spring feet on my machine. And for this particular project, I'm using a denim size 80 needle. Um, you might wanna go to a 90 needle if you're having any problems with your thread shredding. I went with the denim though because I want the piercing power because we're going through multiple layers and the thread as well. Our job is going to be to trace around the outline of our um, trace our motif, our sugar skull here, right? So I'm gonna start in the middle and I do have that bozal foam underneath my entire motif. I just double checked. I'm gonna take a stitch, oh, drop my presser foot. I love a machine that tells me that. 
and then I'm going to take a stitch here and keep on moving forward. Now, once I've gotten a little distance away, I can come back in here and cut that thread out of the way like that. Okay, and I'm just going to continue to finish this design. Now, if you're just making an outline design like we did here, you want to be very cautious to stay as close to your trace line as possible. And you're just doing one single rotation all the way around, right? But, and you're also going to not sew between the stitches. You're going to go from one section to the next, keep tying off. If you're doing a bunch of fill in work like we did for the full sugar skull and the thread painting we're about to show you, you can be a little more sloppy is what I'm trying to teach you. So maybe start with more thread and work your way to less thread if you're a little bit uh, new at all of this. I'm going to lift my needle up. I'm going to move to another section and then I'm going to put my presser foot back down and I'm going to go ahead and get ready to stitch around this. Okay, and I'm going to lock that stitch in as well, cut my threads, and then I'm going to show you what I mean by those jump stitches. So when this comes out here, now I'm going to come in and take my scissor between those two gaps and cut and cut. There we go. So that I don't have stitching between each of the sections. Originally I thought it might be a good idea, but no, it's much better to go each section nice and clean like this. And once you have your entire outline done, it's time for the thread painting itself. And the big key with our thread painting is to try to, and I've started this to try to show you a little bit, our sewing machine or our stitches are going to be Van Gogh's palette. This is going to be how we go ahead and we make all of our different stitching show or the textures or the lines, the movement. So we don't want to just scribble with this. We actually want to have intention to the direction we're moving. Let me see if I can show you that a little bit. And then I'm going to talk you through some of the raw edge work and stuff. So let's just focus right here back in the middle. And I'm going to follow along that outline. So I'm going to drop my presser foot again. Thank you machine. Oops. I'm going to drop my presser foot and my needle, take a couple stitches. Oh, and you know what I just noticed? This is a good thing to watch for when you're free motion stitching. I just saw what looked like a ball of fuzz coming down, but it was actually the thread shredded on my first stitch. So I'm going to take a moment and stop and re-thread. Anytime you see your thread going south, stop immediately and re-thread. And the benefit of thread painting is we're not going to see those starts and stops. I'll be right back. Okay, good. We're back after a quick rethread, and I don't want to sound discouraging, but when you are doing thread painting because you're piling thread up on top of itself, you should really expect to have a few thread breaks. So if that happens to you, hey, it's totally normal. Don't worry about it. And like I said earlier, the benefit is, is we won't be able to see where those breaks happen, okay? So now my major goal is to create those brush strokes with my thread. So I'm going to be sewing around the edge of the nose. And I'm filling in, and then let's say I'm coming up over the eyebrow. Nice medium pace. One of the things I'm doing is I'm traveling in maybe about inch and a half to three quarters of an inch segments. So I'm doing little bits of fill, and then I'll take a line that goes out further, and then I fill in those sections. And you'll start to find yourself kind of in the, I don't want to say painted into a corner because obviously you can just jump over any thread you've already laid down, but I'll find the little pockets in between. So then I'll just fill those in for a little texture up between like the flower above the eye and the nose here. One of my other tricks is I'll do a couple of trips around the outline I first set down when I was working here on this outline. Go a couple times around each perimeter. That way um, it keeps me from accidentally stitching into the open space where the black fabric's supposed to show through.
You know, some of you might have done a lot of like free motion embroidery in the past. And one of the tricks is if you're laying out a big section and you don't want your fabrics to curl up, you can technically lay stitches maybe every inch apart. It's called an underlay. It's kind of like a, a, we, a web of threads that helps secure things before we start satin stitching on top. So you can kind of think of it like that. If you have embroidery experience, you're kind of doing the same thing. Let me just finish filling in this section for us. You can hear the pace of the machine. I'm going nice and fast when I'm in the big wide open areas and I'm going slow and controlled when I'm getting into the smaller areas, right? So let me show you kind of how that's looking. Okay, and with that here, I've gotten a nice amount of texture in there. You can see that that just starts to fill in piece after piece. Now, remember your thread does glow in the dark for these. So the more densely you lay down the thread, the more glow effect you're going to get. And each color does definitely show its color while it's glowing, which is really cool. I have another thread ball coming in, so I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna show you how to finish the edges as well. Be right back one more time. Let's say you wanna turn this into something very cool and three-dimensional, like a mask for a pumpkin, let's say. I'm going to start to turn the edges underneath along that stitched perimeter, the stitch perimeter right here. I'm gonna to start to fold the edge, as you can see, as I'm stitching. It's a little sloppy on the back, but it works fantastic on the front. So that's one of the things I like to do before I get too far into the thread painting. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is bring the project back underneath at an area where I've already stitched and I'm going to bring my stool in so I can get nice and close here. Make sure you're comfortable when you're doing your free motion. That makes a big difference. Okay. And now I'm going to take a couple stitches to lock in my threads. Always want to get that stitch out of the way, that extra thread out of the way. Maybe if I can find it, there we go. Okay. Now, as I'm sewing along the edge, one of the things I can do is I can take that scissor tip so that I'm not piercing my fingers, and I'm actually folding the edge under, and I'm holding it maybe three quarters of an inch away. And now I'm starting to anchor it down. And this can be a little sloppy with your stitching because we're gonna still fill it in with our thread painting, so I'm just rolling that edge and holding it like that. Of course, this was all experimental. I made this up on the go, creating this tutorial for you. This is one of the reasons I love my job so much is I get to be creative and troubleshoot all at the same time, <laughs> sometimes within the same stitch even. So I'm just folding that edge under as I go around. If you wanted to come back in and fill in, you could. All right, you can see that I've stitched all the way around the edge, just folding that under. So now I can go ahead and do the rest of the thread painting. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna crank up the rock and roll. And why don't you just watch along? What you're looking for is watching my motion. Remember, brush strokes is what you're thinking. Enjoy a little bit of this and we'll come back and wrap it up at the end for you. So here we go. Now, wasn't that fun? I hope you were able to see some of the motion. Remember, trying to keep the brush strokes. I do want to point out one point. Remember, if you're struggling with your thread shredding or breaking, I was using an 80s 
jeans and denim, but you could bounce up. You could all go all the way up to like a top stitch size 90. That's got a bigger eye, bigger hole. So shredded thread sometimes not running through and there's a coating that makes it glow in the dark. So anyways, don't get frustrated if your thread is shredding. Just try a different needle choice. And remember, once you have all the white filled in, don't forget to play with all the awesome colors that you've got. So I did my thread painting with the white to fill in the skull and then around the flowers of the eyes and some of the things you can see, some of the greens and the purples. And this was actually the pink down here around the lips. So a lot of fun. And when you kill the lights, all of those have a fun luminescence. They all have a little bit of their own tone showing when they're glowing in the dark. And then as I mentioned, my favorite little finish to this is over here at my pumpkin, right? I just stitched on some elastic to both sides, kind of at those, those joints right near the eyes, the cheekbones, and stretched it around to put this on here so that you could leave your pumpkin outside for year after year after year, and wouldn't that make an icky mess? Don't try that one at home, ladies and gentlemen. What I do want you to do is do some of your awesome own thread painting. Enjoy those glow-in-the-dark threads, and we will see you next time right here at Man Sewing.